Today I'm going to be looking at the NES emulator FCEUX and I'm just going to go into my virtual machine here because I have 64-bit operating system and uh, these emulators do not want to work on 64-bit OS's so <coughs> I had to come in here and do this on XP32. So what I'm going to be looking at is uh, FCEUX. This is the uh, this is the home page for it, and it's an emulator. As it suggests, it's an all-in-one emulator. It does a lot of things uh, that probably the above-average user would need. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff for uh, programmers and uh, uh, all sorts of other things all these tools built into it uh, because it's a combination of different versions of FCEU emulators ultra and other types of emulators which really is just way beyond the scope of what we're going to be looking at uh, I'm kinda doing this for what the average user would want to do if you just want to sit down and you know play some old Nintendo games or something so we're going to go to the downloads page. Oh, and by the way, this is the latest version. 2.13 was released on April 8th of this year, 2010. So I'm going to go to the downloads page. And I'm only going to do a little bit. I'm not going to, I really don't want to spend, uh, cover a whole lot. That's just kind of the way I like to do my videos. You know, I might do a few more videos, but I like to put, you know, kind of, is don't cram a bunch of stuff into one so anyway once we're on the downloads page uh, for most we're going to come over here to, and download this right here the FCEUX 2.3 Win32 binary version we're going to download that it's going to be a zip file so you're going to need some sort of unzip program I like to use 7-zip I'm just going to save this to my desktop that here's the uh, zip folder I'm gonna right click I'm gonna use 7-zip extract files okay and here it is now once you're done you can delete this zip folder don't need that so I'm just gonna drag this up here and I'm gonna open it up <coughs> it's gonna have these different folders in here um, there'll be more folders in just a second I'm gonna open this up and you can see the other folders appear. Why it does that, I, I don't know. Uh, so, right, but today I'm going to be just looking at the controller configuration, setting up your controller, and uh, I'll cover other things later. But make sure you got a controller plugged in, your uh, a USB port, or however you control or plug in your controllers. And I'm going to minimize that. I don't need that. Oops. Close that out. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the sound, because I don't want sound right now on the emulator. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, which again, these, I'll try to go into these in different videos, but for right now, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so... What you want to go into for your controller configurations, which is usually the first thing you want to do when you get an emulator, is, con is uh, go ahead and configure your controller. Come over to config. Come down to input. Click on input and it gives you some different things you can do here. Uh, what all you're really going to want for right now, uh, it does give you the option it gives you several different options here to look at and choose from but for right now if you just want to play uh, you know a one player or even two player basic game you gotta come over here to port one and it gives you these different options you can configure a gamepad zapper uh, a power pad uh, arkanoid paddle uh, these different ones here but we're just gonna do gamepad choose your gamepad and then click configure <coughs> and 
and it will actually give you a virtual gamepad 1 and gamepad 3. Uh, I believe this you can configure up to four controllers, but for right now we're just going to do gamepad 1. So grab your gamepad and then click on left. And you can actually, first you would probably clear that out. And then you can actually, if you hit your left uh, D-pad, it will come it will come up like that so now it's set for that and you click close go to up and then hit up and it changes you can click close now you don't have to hit clear every time I just did for that one so I'm gonna hit down and you'll see it changes it to the con to the d-pad to your controllers d-pad close and then right I'm just gonna go through all these right quick select to do select right start and then B close and then A and then close and you can actually do these turbo buttons too if you don't I don't really ever mess with them once you got that hit close and you're done for that uh, if you want a zapper, you can come over here. Like if you want to play Mario Duck Hunt, just put zapper. And there's really nothing to configure because the left mouse button acts as the trigger. What would be the trigger for your zapper? So, you're good. Uh, never mind these other things right now. Uh, to be honest with you, they're just not that important if you are looking to just come here and play. Now, one thing that says it sometimes when you load this this may be checked by default allow left and right up and down which will allow you to hit both the left and right controllers or up and down uh, controls on your d-pad together uh, I'm gonna uncheck that close and I'm gonna open a ROM right quick that's not what I want I'm gonna go to this one uh, I don't know Choose Mega Man. Whoops. Anyway, I hit start and then you can press what you want. And you're playing. So I'm going to close this out. And it does save it. It'll save your configuration. You don't have to go back in and redo it again. Um, so that's the basics of controller configuration for this emulator. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do next. I've got. To, uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do next on this. But I wanted to. That's usually the first thing you do. So uh, go check it out and. Uh, I'll talk to you later on.